How to save money fast on low income using these seven tips. Do you feel like it's nearly impossible to save money based on your current income? While saving money is much easier when you're making the big bucks, it can seem impossible to save money on a low income. In this video, I will share with you seven practical tips you can use to save money on a low income. If this is your first time with us, then hit the subscribe button for more life amazing videos. Now, let's get into it. Tip number one. Lowering your housing costs. Whether you're a renter or a homeowner, your housing bill will most likely be your largest expense every month. Many financial experts advise that the total of your rent or mortgage payments plus utilities should be no more than 35% of your monthly after-tax income. And while this expense eats up a lot of your monthly income, it also offers the most significant opportunity to find cost reductions essentially allowing you to save more money even if you're earning a lower income. For renters, there are many ways you can reduce your housing costs, with the first being to find a cheaper place. Perhaps a single room in someone's house will be adequate for your needs instead of continuing to rent a two-bedroom apartment. But if you have no desire to move, maybe you can look into other ways to reduce your current rent. Effective strategies can include negotiating an exchange of your services like doing renovations for a rent reduction or agreeing to sign a longer lease if the tenant security is what your landlord wants. When I was a renter, I exchanged tax advice and monthly bookkeeping services for a few extra hundred dollars off my rent. This simple swap of goods and services saved me thousands of dollars over the course of my lease and allowed me to save money while earning a low income. If you're a homeowner, then the advice is a little bit different. You probably don't want to move out to save money, but small changes like turning off the lights and reducing your water usage can lead to substantial savings over time. However, the best way to offset your housing costs is to rent out a room. Renting out a room in your home can easily net you a few extra hundred dollars a month, which can help cover your bills and allow you to put more money in your piggy bank at the end of the month. Tip number two, avoid debt. If you want to save money while on a low income, then you must avoid high interest debt at all costs. This is because debt deters you from saving in two ways. Firstly, having debt means monthly repayments. Every month, creditors will be knocking at your door for money, which if that debt was avoided, would mean more money in your pocket at the end of the month. Secondly, debt is almost always associated with monthly interest charges for lines of credit. These rates are typically around 3 to 5%, which means that on a $10,000 balance, you'd be handing over around $25 to $40 a month in interests. While this may seem like a small amount of money, it can begin to add up when compounded monthly. When you total the dollar value of all of your repayments and the associated interest charges, you can start to see how carrying debt can make saving on the low income a challenge. The problem gets worse when you add credit card debt. On average, the interest rate can be as high as 17%, meaning that getting into debt is an expensive ordeal. And if you're carrying the average credit card balance per US adult of about $6,000, which at the rate means you're paying about $1,000 in interest charges to credit card companies. Therefore, if you want to save money on a low income, you need to avoid debt and its associated interest charges at all costs. Tip number three, limit entertainment costs. We all want to have fun, but unfortunately, this comes at a hefty cost for many people. Eating out, hitting the bar after work, going to the movie theater, and other entertainment purchases can make a significant dent in your budget. But luckily, it doesn't have to. When I was younger, my primary source of fun was going out to the clubs with my friends. But unfortunately, most nights were costly. Between buying drinks and paying cover, most nights I spent $100 easily. As I got older, my attention shifted towards growing my wealth. 
but I didn't want to lose out on social time with my friends. This made me brainstorm new ways to get in quality time with my friends while not breaking the bank. One of my favorite alternatives has been going on walks with my friends and also having dinner parties at home rather than a restaurant. We also watch movies at home rather than going to the theater. In short, we all have fun, but we don't spend an arm and a leg doing it. Tip number four, understand your wants versus your needs. No doubt spending money makes us feel good. But when you're earning a low income and have a desire to save, you need to separate your wants from your needs. For instance, you may want to upgrade your phone to the newest model, but you probably don't need to. You may want a new shirt to wear this Friday, but you probably already own plenty of suitable shirts. When you're not making a lot of money, you have to be extra diligent and spend only on your core expenses. So how should you draw the line between want and need items? I like to classify anything that relates to my survival as a need. These are things like food, clothes, shelter, and transportation in their most basic form. Sure, buying a Ferrari is transportation, but taking the bus or train also gets you from point A to point B. Want items are basically anything that falls outside your needs group. This includes anything that is an extension of things you already own. For example, if you were to upgrade your phone to the newest model, only to get a camera with an extra 2 megapixels in it. Hmm. Of course, you can't restrict your spending to the bare minimum forever. So if you do want to splurge from time to time, here's what I suggest. Set a financial goal you want to achieve, like saving $1,000. Once you've hit the goal, you can then go ahead and purchase the item you've been wanting. This technique is great for two reasons. First, it helps you build the habit of forming financial goals. And second, it gives you time to process how badly you really want the item. As often, we purchase things out of impulse and find ourselves experiencing buyer's remorse soon after. Hmm. So if you want to ensure you save money on a low income, you must be able to separate your wants from your needs. Tip number five, spend wisely on groceries. The average amount of money a family of four spends on groceries is estimated at nearly $1,000 a month, making it one of the higher monthly expenses we typically incur. However, with a bit of planning and strategies, I'm about to share with you. It's not unreasonable to be able to cut that amount in half. The first step to cutting your monthly grocery bill is to plan your meals ahead of time. It will not only be a step in the right direction from a health perspective, but it will also ensure that you only eat when you need to. You see, whether you realize it or not, we waste a lot of food. A 2018 study in Science Daily found that Americans waste on average one pound of food per person. Per day, which if avoided, can mean big savings in the grocery department. Besides avoiding waste, planning ahead will allow you to buy foods that are on sale. Meaning the typical $250 a week grocery bill can easily shrink to $200 or less, ultimately putting more money in your pocket. The second step in reducing your grocery costs is to eat less meat. Meat is by far the most expensive grocery item you can buy. This makes it an easy target when you're trying to reduce your bill. Now, I'm not saying you need to become a vegetarian in order to save money. But by cutting down your meat consumption or replacing it with cheaper options like beans, you will be able to cut down your grocery bill drastically. The final tip that will help you reduce your food bills is to only bring cash when going grocery shopping. All too often, people find themselves at the grocery store hungry and eager to fill up their shopping carts with useless items, facilitated by the seemingly endless ability to spend on credit. Instead, plan out your purchases ahead of time and only bring enough cash for those items you need so you don't let your hunger get the best of you. Tip number six, practice zero-sum budgeting. When practicing zero-sum budgeting, you are intentionally spending every single dollar you make. But not in the way it sounds. 
Zero-sum budgeting involves allocating your income towards each of your expense line items and in your recording any leftover funds towards the savings or investment account. Let's use an example to illustrate this budgeting method. Say you were earning $2,000 a month after tax. Using the zero-sum budgeting method, you would allocate this entire $2,000 towards your monthly expense line items, such as rent, car payments, gas, groceries, and entertainment. But using this method, you would also create a line item for savings. You would then allocate your entire $2,000 to the line items, which forces you to put part of your income in savings. This strategy is particularly effective for those who typically get to the end of the month and realize they have no money left for savings. With the zero-sum budgeting method, as long as you stick to your initial budget, you will be sure to see your bank balance grow. Tip number seven, automate your savings. The final step in ensuring you save money even on a low income is to automate your savings. One of the best things you can do for your finances is setting up automated deductions from your paycheck with your employer. In essence, what these deductions allow you to do is send part of my paycheck directly into a savings account instead of the full amount going right into your checking account. When I set up this process, I allocate 10% of my after-tax income to my savings account. But over time, I found that I've been able to increase this to about 20% and double my monthly savings. I think and believe this savings technique has been so successful for two primary reasons. First, it allowed me to pinpoint exactly how much I wanted to save. In fact, by using automated deductions, you can set your deduction to the amount you have designated as monthly savings in your zero-sum budget, which helps you tie the two money-saving techniques together. Second, it took the thought of saving off my mind allowing me to focus on other important things like improving my skills to make more money. Once you have a solid savings technique in effect, making more money is the number one way to save more. And by freeing up mental space, you may be able to take on a side hustle, earning the extra income and ultimately boosting your savings. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and give it a big thumbs up Thanks for watching.